This video will demonstrate how to install the Fusion to Go 3.0 Fleet Cellular Signal Booster. With permanent installation, this product is ideal for business vehicles or fleet. It's designed to decrease dropped calls and boost 4G LTE data speeds and signals for all cellular devices on any carrier. Before installing, let's talk about the components. Your Fusion to Go 3.0 Fleet includes a permanently affixed outside antenna, NMO mounting cable, booster unit, inside patch antenna, and 12 volt power supply. Refer to your quick start guide for specifications. Step one is to install the outside antenna. Grab some masking tape to protect the roof of the car and find a location on the vehicle's roof that has at least a 12 inch radius away from any obstructions or radiating elements like radio antennas. Also, be sure this location is at least six inches away from any windows. Once you have your radius, Mark the center of that area on your masking tape. To ensure easier drilling of the installation site for the antenna, pre-drill the spot you have marked with your power drill. Once the smaller hole is finished, use a 3 quarter inch hole saw bit to drill the larger hole for the antenna. With the hole drilled, you can now remove the tape and file the inside of the hole to smooth it out. Run the cable underneath the headliner inside the vehicle, and position the cable mount through the center of the hole. Next, thoroughly clean the mounting area. Now you can screw the collar you removed from the antenna connector onto the NMO mount, making sure the mount is centered. Use a wrench to tighten the collar onto the mount. Now install the antenna. Ensure full contact of the antenna to the vehicle surface. Please note that the outside antenna must not be connected or operating with any other antenna or booster. Once the antenna is installed, route the antenna cable inside the vehicle under the headliner and trim along the B-pillar. Be sure to route the cable above the airbag so it won't interfere with proper inflation. Run the booster end of the cable down inside the trim and under the floor liner to where you plan to place the booster unit on the floor of the vehicle usually under a seat where it will be away from sunlight, heat, and moisture. Once you've run the cable, you can replace the headliner now or wait until everything else is done. With the outside antenna and cable installed, you can now install the interior antenna by running its wire behind the dashboard. Identify a location on the dashboard within two to three feet of where your cell phone will be typically used inside of your vehicle and run the cable for the interior antenna behind the dash. Make a small hole where you want the antenna to be placed and feed the wire through. In this case, the user will be using the phone primarily from the driver's seat, so the antenna will be installed near the center of the dashboard. The closer the antenna is to where the phone will be used, the better. With the wire out of the way, clean and dry the mounting area. Once the spot is clean and dry, peel the Velcro backing off the inside antenna and apply the antenna there. Before reinstalling the dash, run the booster end of the antenna wire behind the dash components and under the floor liner and trim to where your booster will be located. Thread it through the same hole in the floor liner as the exterior antenna cable you've already installed. Now take your power supply cable and thread it through, running under the floor liner next to the antenna wire. Leave the end that will plug into the booster sticking out of the floor next to the booster end of the exterior and interior cables you've installed. Route the wired end of your power cable behind the dash components to where it will be connected to the power source behind the dash. In this case, the power cable is being wired to the power supply for the vehicle's cigarette lighter. You may also connect it to the fuse box. Using best practices for vehicle wiring, strip and connect the wires. Your wiring process could be slightly different depending on your vehicle, so check with your vehicle's manufacturer for wiring recommendations. With the main wires connected, use a soldering iron to secure a permanent connection, then cover the connection with electrical tape and move the factory plate back into place. Now locate your ground wire. This vehicle has a substantial metal bar that works perfectly for the ground wire. Crimp an eyelet connector to it, and then ground the wire by screwing the eyelet into a nearby piece of metal. 
Now you can bundle up the excess wire with a zip tie and use another zip tie to keep the bundle in a secure spot. With both antennas in place, it's time to connect the cables to the booster unit. Connect the cable from the outside antenna to the connection marked outside. Then the inside antenna connects to the other side of the booster. Now you can connect your power supply cable. With everything connected, you can use a few zip ties to neatly bundle the cables. After ensuring nothing has been left under the vehicle's carpet, you're ready to secure the booster to the floor. But make sure you won't be interfering with the fuel lines or other components by screwing into the floor. In this case, we're going to attach the booster to the carpet. With antennas and power supply all hooked up, you can power up your vehicle and make sure the booster is working. After bundling the cables running along the B-pillar with zip ties, you should be ready to reconnect your dash components and put everything back in place. With your Fusion to Go 3.0 fleet installed, you'll have more bars with you wherever you go.